days I absolutely love being the Sheriff of Harford County. This is not one of those days. Uh, we're here to um, follow up on what I think our entire community knows, sadly, uh, what is a homicide uh, along the Mom Pa Trail here just outside the town limits. A Maryland mother is found dead after going out on a hike and her boyfriend takes to social media to claim he didn't do anything to her. We discuss the developing details of the case. Welcome back to Sidebar here on Law & Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. 37-year-old mother of five, Rachel Morin, went for a hike Saturday evening around 6 p.m. in Bel Air, Maryland. Less than 24 hours later, Morin was found dead and the police believe someone murdered her. No suspects have been named, but just like most murder cases, those closest to her have come under the microscope, including her boyfriend. 27-year-old Richard Tobin changed his relationship status on August 1st to show that he was in a relationship with Morin. Upon discovering Morin's body, Tobin wrote underneath his Facebook post, I didn't do anything to her. Hundreds of people commented below that post to express their own opinions. Tobin has not been named a suspect. He was the first to report Morin missing after she didn't return home from her hike, and he also provided police with the correct location of her vehicle. Tobin may not be a suspect right now, but he does have a long rap sheet. According to court records, Tobin's faced criminal charges 20 times. He's been arrested twice for criminal second-degree assault, malicious destruction of property, drug possession, and violating restraining orders. Again, police have not accused him of any wrongdoing. We want to be very clear about that, but his criminal past really makes you wonder. Tobin went on to say under that Facebook post that he had struggled with the law but has changed as a person. Joining me to discuss this disturbing case is the Sheriff of Harford County. He is Jeff Gaylor. Uh, Sheriff Gaylor, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Uh, absolutely. Thanks for inviting us to the program today and, uh, you know, sadly to discuss this this horrible case. Yeah, it's absolutely awful. And those, those poor children uh, who have now lost their mother, um, it's, it's heartbreaking. What is the very latest on the investigation? Well, you know, our investigators have been working diligently uh, all the way back to when this was a missing person report and, and hours later, you know, transitioning into a homicide investigation. Um, but much of what what we are releasing is very little. Um, you know, I know that our community uh, and this this story has garnered attention from around the globe. But I know this story, this story has so much public interest and people are just anxious to know. But we, we cannot for a second allow you know the the public wanting to know something to compete with the need to put together a quality investigation to identify a suspect and, and hopefully to bring this case to a successful resolution and prosecution so really we're saying you know we're saying very little at this point that the investigation is going on we have um, 10 detectives assigned primarily to the case you know just just that's their sole focus along with all the other assets of our office our civilian staff, our technical people, our phone, you know, our phone and IT people, everybody's um, talents and investigative skills and efforts are focused on this. But, you know, 10, 10 direct investigators assigned to the case to make sure that we follow up on the hundreds of leads that are coming in. We've had this story shared tens of thousands of times. Um, so we're getting a lot of tips. Uh, a lot of those um, you know, won't go anywhere, but some of them might be that something out there could be that key piece of evidence that we need to bring this case again to a successful resolution. Ten detectives. That, that's a lot of manpower. Is that putting a strain on your department? I only ask because I think that would be a lot of detectives for any department. But obviously, this is all hands on deck for you. And you're exactly right. That, you know, for us, that's that's the bulk of our entire criminal investigation section or the, the larger portion of it. Um, but it, it's all hands on deck. This crime is out of the norm for what we're 30 minutes north of Baltimore. You know, um, a homicide in Baltimore doesn't garner as much of attention as it does here in Harford County. And in Harford County, you know, where this crime occurred just outside the town limits of Bel Air, I, I can't even tell you when the last time they had a homicide. And then you couple that, and you drill down with that, with the fact that this was uh, a young lady, you know, 37 years old, young lady who was out on the uh, trail exercising where she had routinely gone, been known to, known that she would be out there exercising into fitness. Um, and, you know, her life struck down in, in such a criminal manner. Uh, and we're not releasing, I've been asked many times about the details, how we can confirm it's a homicide. 
And, and the only thing I'm answering to that is that it's not an accidental injury. It's not a self-inflicted um, taking of someone's life. Our detectives are 100% clear that this is a homicide investigation. I have a lot of questions for you, but I, w- I want to go back to something you just mentioned uh, earlier uh, when we first started. How soon was she reported missing? Because she was found dead, sadly, less than 24 hours after she left to go on the trail. Uh, so how quickly was she reported missing? Well, she was reported. She went She went around, as I, if I understand the timeline, um, it, she, was, she went out to do her run around 6 p.m. Uh, she wouldn't have been spe- expected back. Uh, her boyfriend reported her missing just uh, around 11.30 p.m. on Saturday night. Um, and then um, the uh, following Sunday at, and I have it here, um, at 1.07 p.m., so on Sunday at 1.07, just a little over 12 hours, a, a self-deployed uh, citizen who knew we were conducting search operations in that area uh, many people were well aware. Social media was a buzz. Um, many people struck out on their own to go searching. What's a very large wooded area that surrounds the the hiking trail, um, and this this individual came across the crime scene. There's been a lot of chatter on social media, on Facebook in particular, um, directed toward the boyfriend, Rich Tobin. Um, He said that he would never hurt her. Uh, He had had some past run-ins with the law, but, you know, that he's changed. Um, So has he been, has he been ruled out? Is he cooperating with your investigation? Well, certainly certainly no one's been ruled out and no one's been ruled in, if you will. There's no single suspect that we're looking at. Um, We are taking, you know, this case as we would any case. We're looking at the victim. We're working our way out from her, you know, those closest to her. And of course, you know, there's a lot of online speculation and accusation uh, about his actions. And all I can say is that, you know, him or anyone uh, who's responsible for this case, when we can make a case against an individual and we have a suspect, um, you know, the public will be the first to know. And as the sheriff in this county and the community, and I want to reassure people of their safety, if I could say certainly that we have a suspect and this was a targeted event and our community overall is safe, that there's not a general threat to the safety, that's what I would be saying. And I am not in a position to say that. So we are we are working all the way out from, again, the inner circle, all the way out to the unknown. Some, you know, some random person on the trail with no connection to the victim whatsoever. We are looking at every possible conceivable uh, scenario. So, so you can't say that you have one suspect or three. Uh, you're still really in the early stages of this. Absolutely. And, and you know, people are anxious. And, and again, we understand that uh, people are nervous, people are afraid. Um, but these things don't uh, generally, and, and, you know, unless it's a, a smoking gun and someone's arrested there at the scene, uh, these investigative efforts become technical, they become uh, very involved, and they often take a, a bit of time. And, uh, you know, that's when you have, you know, just one specific person you can look at or one group you can look at or something like that. And the more far reaching, the more tips we get. And again, this is in the hundreds. Um, that's more work that needs to be done by those, you know, 10 detailed investigators, but uh, all the people that are assisting as well. And obviously uh, we want to know who did this. And, uh, you know, this is a woman with five children. I mean, five children now are left without their mother, how, who's taking care of these children? Uh, I, I mean, are, is Children's Services involved? Are um, other people involved? I know that there's been a GoFundMe that's been started uh, for her children. Well, there's, there's still family. And I, I know that, you know, the, the father of at least a couple of the uh, children are, is still in the picture. The parents, um, you know, her, her parents are still here. And, you know, they've lost a daughter, a brother and sister who have lost a sibling. Um, so they have a, you know, a family network and, and the kids are in good care. I, I was speaking to another news source earlier and they asked and I said, I, I don't have it in front of me, um, but I, I don't know where they are. But I probably wouldn't say if I did, because you know the, that family needs time to deal with the magnitude of what has happened uh, and, you know, the public attention. And it goes back in my mind to the social media. You know, so much out there is speculation and just not true. And, and that does nothing to help this family 
understand the magnitude of this loss or, or be able to focus on what's being done when, when there's so much speculation. If people have information that they think might be pertinent to the investigation, let us you know give that to police and let us vet that information to see if it has value. Did Rachel have a cell phone with her uh, when she was found or any type of um, Apple Watch or a smartwatch? A, a lot of questions, and those are questions that we've been asked, and it's stuff that we're not sharing. You know, it's, it's particulars of the investigation that at this point in time that we're not sharing whether she did or did not. Were, was there any sign of sexual assault? Uh, and again, it's something else. The, the medical examiner has um, I don't know if they've completed all the reports, but they've completed the autopsy, positively identified her because that was a question early on, although we knew it was her. You know, the, the official notification of, uh, of identification comes from the MB's office. That has happened. The manner, uh, the cause of death, we, we're aware of that. But that's all stuff that um, we are not going to release because, again, it, it could interfere. Uh, and, and we do not want anything to interfere with an eventual eventual successful prosecution of the person or persons responsible for this horrific act. Had she been receiving any threats or anything like that that we're aware of? Uh, none that I'm aware of, no. I, but again, you know, that would be, we're going to start with our victim and we're going to work our way out as any good police investigation should. So that would be something our detectives would focus on, it. whether whether I'm aware of it. I, I have not heard that, but our detectives may be aware of something I'm not. Was there any surveillance footage uh, recovered? You know, I, I feel like these days everything's on camera. Everybody's got one of those ring doorbell things. Um, you know, everybody but me, I guess. But, you know, those things are all over the place. Uh, you know, you can drive out of your neighborhood and half the time there's some camera recording somewhere. Oh, uh, 100%. Uh, you know, cameras are everywhere. And I, my yard actually backs up to a different section of this same uh, hiking trail, the Mom Pop Trail. And I have seven cameras around my house. Cameras are cheap. They're, you know, they're not expensive. So certainly that's something that detectives are aware of and they are going to you know, be, be looking. And you know, we're asking the community if, if they have footage that's personally owned that they, they think maybe is of no value, but it shows por a portion of the trail. We, we want to see it. Um, as far as the, it's a part of the Parks and Rec, the actual trail itself, as far as Parks and Recs for the county, the, the uh, department for the county, there are not trails along the camera, certainly something that we've had discussions with as we have stepped up our patrols there, um, you know, after the fact, uh, you know, in order to reassure a community, uh, something that we've had conversations with them about is maybe exploring that possibility. It gets fairly rural at places. Um, so, uh, but in this age of cheap cameras and technology, it, it should be something I think that we could, we could make happen. Sheriff Gaylor, if people have information about Rachel Morin's life or her murder, how do they reach out to you? Well, certainly if, if anyone, again, and anyone thinks that they have information that might be helpful to investigators, uh, but they're not sure, we want them to err on the side of letting us know. Um, they can do that through our, through our Facebook. You know, so many people live on social media and that will get to investigators or we're asking people to call our investigators at 410 836 Five four three zero. Well, let's hope um, that you get some leads on this um, and that some measure of peace can come to this family. Uh, nothing's ever going to, you know, bring her back, we know, but answers are, are what this family needs at this point in time and, and, and sympathy and uh, probably some financial assistance. So thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And we want to deliver those things for the family, particularly, you know, justice and see this person removed from our community. No doubt. Thank you. I also spoke with Mike Alcazar, a 30-year veteran of the NYPD, about how important it was that Rachel Morin's body was found so quickly. I mean, a lot of the information should be obtained when they process the crime scene um, to see what kind of evidence they recover, DNA evidence, um, any I can compare. Uh, was there a struggle? Uh, does she have any defensive wounds? Um, you know, DNA to play big, and it's it's a it's a silent witness that provides a lot of information. It never lies, and and it's an investigative step. Uh, it should develop some leads for them immediately. 
And that's it for this edition of Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can listen to and download Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law and Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.